recording. Oh, thank God. Wow. I haven't really done anything yet. No, it is recording. It is recording. There it is. That is... I don't know what that is. Oh, great. Fantastic, Internet. There it is, right? This is literally the first bug found in a computer program. Literal bug. It's a moth. Yeah, so... Grace Hopper, cool lady. I think she should be on currency. Okay, in any case, let's write this, um, let's write this uh, selection sort. So what are, the, what are the main components we need for selection sort? Uh, desktop. Touch cell P. Code selection. Whoops. Yeah, you should read a book by Isaac, Wal Isaac Walterson. It's called The Innovators. It will give you a comprehensive history of computer science, and it's fascinating. It's a very good book. OK, so let's try coding this up today. So from typing import list. And so we need at least two things. So I want to define selection sort. And for this, we're going to have to take in a, a list. Uh, and let's be easy on ourselves. Let's take a list of integers, and we're returning nothing because this is happening in place. So just to remind myself that nothing is being returned, you should put that there, return nothing. We're also going to need uh, select, uh, how do you want to do this? By finding the smallest thing and putting it at the beginning or the biggest thing and putting it at the end? You want to do it the smallest? Select smallest. Okay. From x's. And since we're building the list from the front, we're going to have to say the smallest from this position. Because right? I don't always want the smallest from the beginning of the list. I want the smallest from the first thing that isn't sorted. Right? So I want to know the smallest element in x's from a starting position. So maybe I'll say start instead of k. OK, so what is this going to do? So. Uh, Finds the leftmost smallest, finds the index of the leftmost smallest least element in x's. In actually, x's after start. Okay. So let's get some examples here. So if we select smallest from empty, what should that return? Shouldn't return a list though, right? We're returning nothing, yeah. Oh no, select smallest shouldn't return nothing. It should return an index. Yeah. Oh, okay, so but like then now it should select smallest return. Nope. 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 We have a constant for this. Nope. None. Right? That's the constant we have when there's no answer to it. Like all Python programmers have basically agreed, if there is no solution, you're going to return none. And since we've all agreed, this can make the code easier. I can say, well, if, if there is no smallest, then continue. I'll give you something maybe a little bit easier. Select smallest. I thought I deactivated caps lock. Okay, what about this one? All right. I heard the answer. Zero. Not one. Remember, zero indexing. The smallest element in a list of one is the first element. It also happens to be the largest element. Right? That's why these singleton lists are special cases. OK, so stuff the special cases. It's going to pound on the keyboard here. 2, minus 5, 6, 1, 0, minus 3. Uh, starting from position 3. So the third position is what? Um, so 0, uh, sorry, 2, minus 5, 6, 1. Uh, so at the fourth position is 0. At the fifth position is minus 3. So I think this should return 5. Yeah? Okay. Let's write it. 
So I need to do two things. I need to find the smallest, smallest element of the list, and I also have to remember the index. So in this case, remember, the answer is an index. We can still search for the current smallest, current min. Uh, I'm going to set that to float inf for reasons we've discussed. And now I just have to find the smallest. So for, OK, k in range, I want to start at start. I want to end at the length of x's. Uh, if x is at start, oops, if x is at k, is less than the current minimum, then the current minimum is x is a k, and the answer gets set to this index, and then return k. I think that should do it. All right, I'm just walking from start to the end, and I find the smallest thing in that range. So. Um, Let's not believe me. Let's just do some doc testing because um, we wrote them there. Thank you. Should return answer uh, selection. Uh, right. So import doc test doc test dot test modulus. Expected none and got a negative one. Oh. That should be set to that. Negative 1 wouldn't be a bad. No, no, no. Negative 1 would be bad. Because you can negatively index into lists. And if I say that the, the list position's at negative 1, that would actually be wrong. So none is appropriate here, right? Ah, blah, 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 blah. Expected. Oh, right. I learned this the other. You don't actually write in none. You just write nothing, right? So hooray. OK, so we have the first piece of the pie. So now we have to use select smallest to build a sorted list. Uh, performs selection sort on x's in place. Uh, so we're Ascending, right? So what do I have to do? So I have to sort the list for k in x's. Oops, range, length, x's. I'll be able to program Pythonically again soon, next week when we do some of the other ones. Um, OK, so something that I we never really talked about, but does get mentioned in some um, classes, specifically, or explicitly. So. Something that we're going to have to do in all of our algorithms for sorting are swap two positions. Right? I never really told you how to swap two things, because I figured most of you would be able to just figure it out. But let's be explicit. If I say x is 1 and y is 1, now a dumb way to try to swap this, to try to swap the variables would be like this. x gets y, y gets x. Why is this wrong? Yeah, I've overwritten x before setting it to y. OK, so if I say x is 1 and y is 0, why do you tell me what to do to solve this? Right, so um, typically the solution here is to create a temporary variable, let that equal to x, then let x equal to y, and then set y equals to the temporary variable. OK, but this is how do Java programmers and C programmers would do this. I want to do this Pythonically, right? Real programmers. So if, if x is zero and y is one, yes, kind of. Oh, oh so cool! You guys know I didn't code Python, right? Like. <laughs> Python's not me. You're clapping for the wrong people. Um, yeah, so you can do a swap like this using a tuple if you want. And it saves you the trouble of having to create a temporary variable. And it also contains your swap to exactly one line. Right, so there are, there's a bunch of advantages to using the swap like this. OK, so I've taught you how to swap. OK, so 
I have to now walk through my list, right? And remember, since we're sorting from the front, every iteration we have should sort. So doing one iteration of sort should sort the, the first thing. After two iterations, the first two things should be sorted. Then three, then four, then five. And we'll print just to make sure that we're doing this right. So I need to first find the smallest element in x's from this starting point, right? Zero is the first one. And let's just say that that's i. And then what do I need to do is I just need to swap xi's, x's, k's with x is a k, x is an i. And then return nothing, right? Because I'm just, I'm operating in place. But let's just do this for the time being so I can see what is going on. Um, right, so let's leave here. I'm just going to write a simple function here that's going to save us a lot of time. Uh, define random list of length you can't see. n integer, and this is going to return a list of integers um, from random import rand int. So what I want to do is I just want to return a, a list of random integers, random integers, I don't know, maybe between minus 10 to 10. Uh, for uh, x in range n. So this is a list comprehension that's just going to, okay, so I promised every time I did a list comprehension I'd do it the other way. Answer is equal to empty um, for x in range n. Answer dot append uh, rand int minus 10 to 10 and then return answer. I'll just leave that down there in case you want to see the list comprehension. Okay, so let's go in. Let's just see that my random list can actually do the thing I asked it to do. Perfect. So here's a random list. Uh, let's say five. And now let's give this to our selection sort algorithm. Oops. And let's see what happens. Oh, it works. Um, OK, so what happened in the first iteration? So in the first iteration, it found the smallest Okay, let me print more information here. Print x's, and I'm going to print what it found was the smallest. So at i, it found, okay, geez, tab, it found that, and tab, great, okay. So this is how the algorithm was working. So at um, the first iteration, it said at it found a minus 2 at 4. Oh, sorry. I have to put this. That is puzzling. How come it didn't find minus 8 to be the smallest thing? Minus two. What's happening? Anyone? Okay, well, let me just see. What is the select smallest in here? Oh, from zero. Zero. Yeah, that is the smallest. Huh. Um, so this is weird because it's working. Okay, let's just try a different random list. Uh, Okay, well, let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, it's working. I think maybe my prints are just a little bit off, but it's just performing the these computations, but in reverse. Right? Instead of putting stuff at the end of the list, it's like finding the smallest thing and putting it at the beginning of the list. So I encourage you to go look at the code and like play with it a bit. Uh, so we have that. Do you want to write some test cases for this? Not this one. This one, maybe. Because uh, I learned how to do test cases on in-place functions. So you have to do something like this. So you say... Uh, define a list, one, two, three, and then you can say uh, selection sort this list. And then if you print the list, it should be one, two, three. Right, that's how you write a doc string when there's no return. Uh, let's do some other ones, some edge cases. 
So what should the empty list return? Oops. What should the empty list return when sorted? Empty list, right? Are any members of the empty list out of order? No, because it has no elements, right? So it fails to not be out of order. I'm out of order. You're out of order. This whole place is out of order. You guys need to watch way more movies, if only to recognize my uh, references. OK, so what's, what happens if I sort the singleton list? OK, we should return back this. And let's just do something a little bit more complicated. I'm just going to cheat and maybe grab this. Nope, I need a sorted, unsorted list. Just to stump this into here. And what should this sort to? Minus 10, minus 10, minus 9, minus 7. OK, so let's try and do our doc testing. Oh, I printed too much stuff. Hold on. Oh, great. Perfect. Um, we're doing a lot better than the last class. Uh, probably because it's the second time I'm writing this code today. Um, although in the other class we did the maximum, so I didn't write exactly the same code. Okay, so we actually do have some time to run the experiments then. So <laughs> the next thing I want to do now <coughs> is see how good this algorithm is. <coughs> or maybe I'll just die. <coughs> Which one would you guys prefer? Death or, or more experimentation? You sure you want to tell me the answer? I haven't written the exam yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do remember the cop. I don't have to remember something that I'm currently holding on to and enjoying. If you bring me a panda, you get an A+. Plus. Not a sticker, though, a real life one. I want that thing here on the ground like this. Right? <laughs> OK, so I have to show you now how to time stuff. And this, this is like stupidly complicated for like no reason. But it's not my fault. Uh, and I also get to yell at you for printing again using these examples. So it's not going to be fun. So the um, function that you need to use is called timeit. So from the uh, library timeit, we can import timeit. Okay. So what's timeit going to do? Well, if I have a function whoops, that is written properly, uh, and maybe this function returns 3 to the power of 10 to the power of 6. Okay. Um, I can now say something like time it, uh, and then I have to give it this extra parameter, this number equals 1. So do you guys know what multitasking is? Do you guys know how your operating system works a little bit? Well, I'm going to tell you. So um, it would be really bad if you were watching a YouTube video and that was like the only thing that your computer could do. If your computer could only do one thing at a time, you would hate your computer. <laughs> it's like, I'm typing into the keyboard. Well, no, I'm playing a YouTube video. You should wait. Like, I'll, I'll wait to get input from you from the user. And so obviously that's not how your computer works. How your computer works is it has a bunch of tasks that it's, it's doing. It, it really is only doing one task at a time. But it's shifting between these tasks so rapidly that you as a human don't notice. It like plays like a second of the YouTube video, then waits for like a millisecond for input from the keyboard, and then updates the screen, and then updates the sound, right? And it's doing this so rapidly back and forth that it just appears that everything is running at the same time. Now, I'm telling you this for this reason. If we run a Python program, we can't be like, what does it mean that it returned in 10 seconds? Does it mean that uh, maybe the computer went off and did some other task that was like uninvolved with our Python program for like eight seconds? Um, I don't know how much time actually was spent running my program. So you never really test how like a function wants for its timing. You want to do something like time it 100 times and then take the average time. Right? So that's what this number is doing. You're telling uh, time it, how many times should I run this program uh, to time? So once, 
So do you think this will, so this is three to the power of a million. What do you, what do you reckon? This is a five-year-old computer. Just guess. I'll make it easy. Greater than one second, less than one second. Tenth of a second. Not bad. Uh, if I tell it to do it ten times, I should expect that the decimal is going to move by one, yeah? Great. Okay. This is what I want to yell at you guys for. Whoops, whoops, whoops. 3 to the power of 10 to the power of 6. What's happening? Oh, God, Python. I forgot about your brackets because you changed them. It used to be the other way. Sorry, you guys can't see that. Oh, God. OK. So we wrote another function like that. It's virtually identical to foo, and that is just going to print out the exact same value that foo was calculating. OK, so I'm going to time it foo. Uh, let's do it five times, yeah? 0.38 seconds. Same function, except you're printing the result to the screen instead of just computing it. It's not done yet. That's just the first one. That's the first one. Five. 15.4 seconds. So perform the same computation that took me a tenth of a second. Prints are very expensive. Very expensive. Right? Don't print unless you want to like cripple the efficiency of your code and annoy me by like doing this. Do you see the woman in the red dress? Thank you. I got some, there we go. A plus for that guy. I actually may invent a new grade, A plus plus, and give you that, right? Do you need any more evidence to me that printing and returning are like fundamentally different things and that you should never use the print statement, right? This was an increase of about a thousand, right? And so we're, the, Lion's share of computation for a print is actually spent dumping that output to the screen, right? So if this doesn't convince you, I wash my hands of it. I give up, right? Just don't print. Okay, so I've now shown you how to time something, but there is one caveat here. Um, the timer can only time functions which have no input, right? So if I did something instead like this, if I defined foo and I just made a really uh, small change. So this time I return 3 to the power of 10 to the power of n. Right? Basically the same thing. You would think that you should be able to do this. Right? Just time it. It complains. And it gives you this really esoteric error that I actually had to look up last night. So I'm going to save you from getting confused by this. It's just that time it really, really expects a function which it can call with no input. And foo of 6 is no longer a function call. It's a constant. It's, it's like I gave the timer a number. Right? It's like I can't, how do I time it? It's a constant. You just gave me a number. You have to give me a function. OK, so this is how you turn a function with a call uh, into a function without a call. So you can do something. You can wrap it. Wrapper is delight. Uh, and you return foo of 6, basically. And now you have a function with no inputs uh, for which you can call timer on. Keyword can't be an expression. Is wrapper a keyword? Do I, oh, I put a dot. Sorry. There we go. Right, so now it, it times it, right? So uh, if you want to time one of your functions, you can always like wrap it like this. But there's an easier way, but it involves lambda. So remember how lambda can like help you create an inline function? There you go. If you just stick a lambda in front of the thing, 
It's just a constant function which just takes everything to foo6. And so using a lambda here basically turns that number into the constant function of that number. And so there are, there are two ways here that you can time your functions. You can wrap them, or you can just stick a lambda with a colon in front of it. You, you pick. OK, so now what I want to do is write some code that's going to time uh, how long it takes to sort a list of various lengths. So let's write this down here. Actually, I should probably use this import main, but I don't know how to write it. Let's grab it from your, I'll grab it from the assignment. I think it was, yes, I just want to use, no, where is it? Where's that main thingy? Uh, do you know how to write it? Does anyone know how to write it? If main is equal to, okay, screw it. Whatever, I'll just do it in the terminal. Okay, uh, def experiment. I'll just write it all in, um, I'll just write it all in a function. Okay, so what do we want to experiment? So we want to take, we want to find random lists of various lengths. So let's do something like this. For uh, length of the list in range, and maybe I want to go from, I don't know, minimum length 100 to what? Maybe, how many times should I double this list? Four, eight, 16, let's try 32. We can always print out um, intermediate results. And I want to maybe count by, I don't know, hundreds? Or how should we do this? I don't know, maybe, maybe we should just count to 10 and double the list each time. Um, so the length, OK. So the length of our list is going to be at first 10. So then I'm going to generate a random list of length L. Oh no, of length length. And then let's just double the length for the next iteration. Okay? And then let's say from time it, import time it. Uh, then let's say time it. Uh, what do I want to do? Lambda. Uh, selection sort on x's, and maybe let's do it five times. Okay, let's save this result, time, and then I have to say time divide equal five to get the, the runtime of a single one, and then let's just print Print this. Okay, this, then a tab, then a this, then a tab. So length is this. Uh, time it takes is this. Dot format. And then I want to give it length and time. And then I want to return nothing. So hopefully I didn't introduce any syntax errors, but I think that's very unlikely. Oh, okay. Um, experiment. That's not too bad. A list of 5,000. Wow, that finished. So we managed to sort a list of 5,000 terms in maybe a fifth of a second. Okay, so clearly we can bump this stuff. Okay, okay. I see. So maybe we should start at 100. All right, see if we can do it from 100. So what we really want to be able to do, maybe next class, is we'll plot this. Because we're actually interested in the shape, right? Because generally speaking, if we plot these points and it's a line, that's the best we could ever hope for. If a linear increase in the size of the problem corresponds to a linear increase in wait time, great. That, that's about as best as you can do. Well, we're not, but we're not going to find that for this case. If you ever came up with a linear sort algorithm, billionaire, right? Either a billionaire or killed by someone in your sleep, right? Because that would be, yeah, the CIA probably. Um, six seconds for 25,000. Yeah, we're going to find here, I'm going to spoil it a bit. 
that an increase, a linear increase in the length of the list corresponds to a quadra quadratic, quadratic increase in wait time. Right, so if, you, if your link, list was length 10, you may have to wait 100 seconds. If your list was a length 100, you have to wait a million seconds. A thousand, whatever a thousand squared is, right? But the point is, this is a bad run time, right? The best we're ever going to be able to do is n log n, which is basically linear, because taking the log of something is like horrifically sh shrinks it. You guys know what the log is? You just... If I give you a huge number and you take its log, you just count the digits that, that it was listed in. So like a number like a million gets reduced to five, or maybe six, whatever. Five or six is still a lot less than a million. Okay, let's wait for one more and then maybe, oh, well, maybe waiting for one more is going to be long. Because I said it's going to t be a square. Thank God for this coffee. why computer scientists takes lots of coffee breaks. You do like do stuff like this, but like, all right, I have to go. I have to go do something else. Compiling. Uh, what else do I have? So let's go here. Um, so man, I'm going to post all this code. Maybe you guys can run your own experiment, see if you could improve the code that I've written to make it a bit faster. Uh, here's all the time and information that I gave you. So um, it's there written in case you want to refer to it. Um, so next time, we're going to have to come up with a better way of comparing efficiency of programs. I don't want to use timers because like if I ran it on your computer and then your computer, we're all going to get different timings. We're going to have to settle on something to count in order to say this algorithm does less work than this algorithm. And the thing I think we should count are comparisons, right? Number of swaps that we have to do. Um, next time we're going to do bubble and insertion sort. And then the next day we're going to talk about algorithm complexity properly. Please travel safe. Drive safely. Walk safely. I want to see all you guys here on Monday. Yeah. I have a wife for that. Well, what happens if there's a zero in the list? <laughs> So it's like I want to find the, the smallest thing in a list. So basically, I have to say, I have to like compare it with the current smallest number. So you pick me something that's not infinity. You said zero. Fine. I put minus one in the list. You're wrong. Right? Right, you say okay. Fine. I'll make it minus one. Okay. Minus two. You're still wrong. We can play this game endlessly. Like I'm setting it to the very very minimum that it can be. But I was thinking one over Yes, one over <laughs> You're confused. You're now bringing calculus okay. into there, right? Hello. I have a question. Let me know if you have any questions.